Still them talk say, make me off mine But thank God say, my ego don't come So my people make you lie down oh, yo, yo. My ego don't come, oh, yo, yo. My people make me shut up Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Good evening to you, good morning to you, and uh, good afternoon to you. Depends on the time you are watching this video and wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun live, and thank you so much for waiting. Uh, somebody told me that uh, I'm going to start uh, getting charged for uh, people having to be uh, waiting for this program. But it's a good thing for those who always join me live. My live broadcasts are always, you know, uh, the longest, but not all my videos. So when you go back on my Ego's Diary videos, yeah, you will see that uh, some of the videos, some of the live broadcasts have been cut into, you know, some stretch. Depends on what we are talking about. So you can always take your time if you're watching my videos once again. The longest are the live videos. And that can take us like, you know, anything from 60 minutes to 90 minutes and more. It depends. We've not had our calling uh, program in a while. So whenever we do after, it's always a longer time. So you are all served. If you are my ego's diary, there will be no uh, any uh, dull moment, so to say especially if you have keyed in. So thank you to every one of you who have always, who have always been, uh, you know, around to share me up. Thank you. And uh, I have another news for you. Yesterday, I told you about uh, the AJ Foundation, uh, which uh, cares for the aged people in Ogun State. Their work covers areas like uh, Odobulu local government, Ikena local government, Shagamu local government. And they, are, they told me that uh, they are already uh, railroading into Abel Kuta North, Abel Kuta South, in, uh, in Ogun Central. So their job is voluntary. Nobody pays them. So it's just one of these uh, charity organizations that feels like the aged people, the widows, the, our, our uh, you know, senior citizens, as much as uh, the system has abandoned them, you know what I'm talking about. There are people who took it upon themselves to care for these people. And they, these are thankless jobs. So yesterday I shared that with you and uh, many of you responded. I said, reach out to them. Let them know that uh, from my Egun's diary, we spoke about them. We care about them. Every penny, every pound, and every dollar, uh, and every cobble or naira, as you, may, you might say, uh, you know, have uh, contributed, uh, that goes to them is our own piece of love, no matter how far away we are from them. And I got the report that, uh, well, you responded and they got a total of uh, 23,500 Naira yesterday. I know we can do better. So I got a clip I want to share with you, the kind of what they do with them, the elderly people in this part of Yoruba land. I'm going to start, you know, I choose to start uh, start this broadcast with that because it's so important, just like every other thing we're going to talk about on my Egun's diary today, okay? So they shared this with me. This is them having uh, physical engagement, exercise with the elderly. Apart from them providing them counseling, providing them food, providing them medicals, providing them uh, checkups and, uh, you know, physical and mental health. So they sent this to me for those who might want to just take, take a glimpse of this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, that's what they do. Do you get that now? They engage them. I grew up in Ijebu. I grew up among old people. I'm talking about old, very, very old people. My great-grandmother died at the age of something around there, under than the four. I lived with her until that age. I mean, you know, imagine a young boy living with an 80-year-old I mean, woman. So I grew up around old people, and I can tell you this. When you look at the society today, most of the people abandoned most, especially in a country like Nigeria, where everybody is so busy with their own personal problems that uh, they will call them grandma in the village. Some of them, they don't get seen more than once a year. They don't get visitors that are checked on them. They are mostly on their own. And they rely on young, young children around, uh, you know, in the, in the neighborhood to help them and they assist them in many things. Now that we have organization that actually talks to them, an organization that they can talk to and tell them about how they feel, you know what I'm talking about? I know how personally this means. And let me tell you something. There are many people who are doing thankless jobs. They are not doing it because they want us to praise them. They are not doing it because they want us to validate them. And they are not doing it because for their own uh, personal gain. But you see, in the society today, we have people who will never give a harm. They will never give a bit of themselves to, any, to help anybody. But when they can question those who are doing it, they can question their credibility, they can question their honesty, they want to know how they do it. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yet, like I said, most of these jobs are thankless jobs. There are people, apart from, you know, apart from their own personal lives that they have to deal with, they still have to take care of others too. The best we can do is to what? Either appreciate them or support them or just keep quiet. You know what I'm talking about? It may not mean much to you, but it does mean a lot to so many people. It's just like us of Maya Gun's diary. When we reach out to people, say, well, let's raise money and help this person. It doesn't mean that uh, we are actually like here to, uh, you know, just talk and talk and talk. Yeah, we do talk a lot. A lot of people get into it. The analysis is good. Analysis is good. Everybody enjoys it. Well, how, or how else are we touching other people's lives? How else are we making a difference in the same society that we are also talking about? This may not mean much to so many people. And at, at, you know, some may actually see it as uh, for personal gain, like I said. But does it really matter? Yeah? My Egon's diary has been there. We have always been. I've always been pushing you know, things to say, oh, let us reach out to people, no matter how little it is. You may not know what you are changing. You may not even know the impact of what you are giving. And in this regard, I want to say thank you to every one of you who responded, okay? For those who are asking for the details, if you want to reach out to them, it is on your own free uh, volition, okay? Donation is always voluntary. If you dip your hand in your pocket and you reach out to people, it is always voluntary, okay? And uh, when you do that, you do that, uh, well, at your own... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Your own conviction. You don't make it an issue, all right? And become and discredit people's efforts. And you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we are so grateful. And for those who might want to still help, I'm talking about if you really want to help for real, something substantial, reach out to them. The Age Nigeria Foundation, they are called. And I want to say thank you once again. Their detail will appear on your screen. You can use that. The second news, second good news I have for you before I get so deep into tonight's conversation is that I have uh, gotten a, a sort of an endorsement partnership deal. And all thanks to all of you who always tune in anyway. You want to talk to me? You want to check on Mayegu? What is Mayegu talking about tonight? What is he talking about tomorrow? All these has attracted uh, people who value data. It's about data. This comes as uh, a great uh, 
you know, a sort of a great leap to what we have been doing. I have been supported. I have been bagged. People have uh, shared me up. People have shown the love to me openly. They have shown it to me privately. They will go everywhere for me. So when you now get other bigger uh, uh, platform that says, we, we, we are so impressed with what we, you are doing. We are so impressed with your data. You've got so big a community here that you have an opportunity of uh, rallying your people around, bringing them together to not just to talk about the problem, but to make an impactful impact around that problem. We want to partner with you. So we all, most of us who watch My Egun's Diary are in diaspora. My Egun's Diary political is like your key, it's like your plug. If you want to know what is going on in Nigeria, genuinely with an open mind, okay? We won't lie to you. I'll show everything to you enough that you'll be able to make your own uh, rational decision. So they are partnering with us. It's a good thing. So very soon you'll be seeing them on my platform. They will come here to talk to you. We are mostly in diaspora. We, would, we actually care about our own family members and friends and relatives back home in Nigeria. So we send money home. So they said, it is a community where we are not just talking about the problem. Like I said, we also, at least, imagine 36 billion remittance every year. $36 billion remittances to Nigeria from diasporans. So we are a big voice. Part of what we do on Mayagun's Diary is to encourage us, the diasporans, to use our great voice, our great influence, and at the same time, the influence of the money we put into Nigerian economy to change what is now going to become a genocidal journey that Nigeria is pushing Nigerians to. And we cannot just look back. I mean, just sit back and look away. We cannot just be bailing them out or, or, I mean, only sending money home, paying hospital bills, paying house rent, paying uh, school fees, and on and on and on for the people that the government abandoned. And yet, we have no say. When we talk, they tell us that uh, just keep your, just, just, just enjoy your freedom there. Now, the safety that has now eluded our people back in Nigeria it has eluded us too. Many of us can no longer just take our families home just like we would want to do or we used to do because of the news coming out of Nigeria. And if you have to take your family home now, you have to make sure that you provide your own special security. Enough. When I'm talking about special security, one of them is that you watch where you go. You are careful of where you stay. You're careful of who knows where you are. Is that a life? So we send money home all the time, but we don't have a say. We don't have a say in their election. We don't have a say in their policy making. We don't have a say in how they rule. We don't even have a say to how they conduct their elections in a way. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we are inconsequential. Well, a company feels like we are consequential enough that we can make a difference. So if I have a lot of you from here, who we'll believe in that. Because you do that anyway, naturally, you find a way to get the, mo to get the money sent back to Nigeria. So if they partner with us because they appreciate what we do, let us grab it. So when you see them on Maya Goon's diary, please give me all the support you can. Because you know one thing what that does uh, for me? It helps me to build more, you know, a very more uh, a viable platform, a much better, uh, you know, equipment, sort of a better content. Because I own my content. You know what I'm talking about? 100% I own my content. I see things out there that are, you know, so valuable enough that I own everything. So everything that comes from that is just a reward to do more. And with all of you behind and beside me, I am not afraid. Thank you very much. I have used my first 20 minutes to tell you about the good news. I'll tell you more when the final, I mean, when the, when the ink dries. When I say the ink dries, I'll tell you more about this. And I know you will be there to support my ego. So thank you very much if you have also picked up on the information on your screen to reach out uh, to the Age Nigeria Foundation. They are doing a great job, a thankless job. The most we can do is to say thank you to them. Whatever you give to them, follow that uh, instruction on there, reference it from my ego's diary political, and uh, they will be grateful. So far, they have received 23,500 Naira. That's pretty much like, uh, how much? 30 pounds or 20 pounds or 30 pounds, yeah? I think we can do better. And I'm telling you, it is legit. If you help them, you might be doing one of the best things ever 
in this 2021 that you'll be so grateful for later. Thank you very much. Uh, Collins, I look good because I've got good friends. Let's get down to business. So at this point, I want to tell you that, please listen to everything I'm going to say with an open mind, okay? You have your opinion. You're going to believe what you're going to believe. You're going to follow what you're going to follow. But I might be able to, uh, to help you with the information I'm going to provide on this platform, on this conversation tonight, yeah? I might be able to help you in processing what you think you know. Things you know that you agree with. Things you think you know that you disagree with. I might be able to help you find the missing clue. Nigeria is not working. It is so obvious. You have incompetent, corrupt people. Careless people without empathy. People who seem not to be humans, who have turned the Nigeria as they've turned the country to an open concentration camp. In an open concentration camp, yeah? So everyone wants to be a boss because everyone is in prison. And when you have this limited leverage or privilege, you think you are better, then when you look around, it is just an open concentration camp. The orcs, the criminals, who call themselves the rulers of Nigeria, the kingmakers, including the kings, the decision makers, the money movers, the politicians and traditional rulers, all of them telling us how smart they are running a country that has now become a total failed country, a country that is at the precipice of a total collapse, a country that is so close to another civil war. The hawks, they put all their eggs elsewhere. They've got all their eggs, their loot, their everything they've taken away from that country. They kept them away elsewhere, secretly, guide, jealously guided. Then they go back to that country to make ridiculous laws, laws that will eventually turn brothers against brothers, government against people. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Communities against communities, tribes against tribes, ethnic groups against ethnic groups. Things that could normally be sat and discussed uh, around, I mean, around the table become so trivial things, I mean, that now became so degenerated to the point that they don't even care. That is the problem. Yorubas are now saying they are going. They didn't wake up overnight and say, oh, we are going to leave. Don't pretend. Please don't pretend that this just happened by an, by an accident. Oh, some greedy people, some selfish people, some uh, tribalistic people, blah, 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 people just want to cause trouble. Come on. You will be so ingenious with that. I mean, that would be so self-serving. It is called self-denial. You know it is obvious that, number one, security situation in, in Nigeria has collapsed. Not because people are not ready to discuss it. But people are being given terms of that discussion. If you are going to come to that security meeting with this agenda of, or with this uh, complaint of uh, full and this, full and that, then we will not have a conversation. That's the term that they are giving for peace. Then they are going behind this scam to put together another, another catastrophic uh, problem that we eventually canalize, in, canalize into a, or let me say, snowball into a complete total anarchy. Wait for it. Yorubas have done everything. I'm talking about the Yoruba political class. They have done everything they were required of when it comes to the political partnership in Nigeria. Even though most of that partnership were coerced, you know what I'm talking about? Most of them were forced. But nevertheless, it seems that Yoruba has played all the part very well. Yoruba continue to allow Nigeria to take our resources and give us back peanuts. Do you get that now? So, as long as that peanut they give back to us, take care of our elite. As long as they can give some little leverage for, I mean, for our businessmen who can make some more money, at least from that contraption, that Nigeria, where people have been so disadvantaged that even those who claim to own the power, they are even worse off. And when they say, let us discuss about it, why should we continue like this? Yorubas kept faith. 
Yorubas continue to let them take the resources anyway. The Yorubas continue to live in poverty anyway. Yorubas and Yoruba political criminals continue to milk that arrangement while they watch their people die in penury. When I say die in penury, I'm talking about an archaic, I mean, it's a, a sort of a, 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 a chronic poverty. There are people sort of kind of subsidized in a way that they, 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 they managed to adjust to an arrangement with Nigeria. That arrangement has become so uncomfortable now that even the political class in Nigeria, they have lost the conversation too. They have lost the control. They are in battle with the control of, well, how can we maintain trust with the people who keep our people poor and at the same time maintain control of our people who are daily realizing the mistake of their continued being part of Nigeria. The governors in Yoruba land continue to say they speak for the Yorubas. But really? Are the Yoruba governors actually, they said they are speaking for Yorubas. I mean, sorry, they can speak for Yorubas. They can speak for Yoruba people because they were elected by the Yoruba people, by millions, according to the, by, by, by millions of Yoruba people. Really? Can you actually prove that theory? You, my brother and my sisters, yes, uncles and uh, aunties, is it true that Yorubas elected the governors and elected all the political office holders in Yoruba land today? Is it true? Do you actually believe that? I know you don't believe that, because I don't. Elections in Nigeria and in Yoruba land is like war. Elections are meant to be the expression of either validation of a leadership or rejection of such leadership. That is where it should be, right? Where people can come together and say, hey, we don't want this anymore. We're not going to be part of this anymore. How could you be making these horrible deals for Yorubas for 22 years? Yorubas cannot boast of uh, 24 hours electricity. Yorubas cannot boast of uh, any reliable medical system. No medical hospital. No, you see... Yorubas cannot boast of uh, any improved infrastructural uh, facilities. Our schools are dilapidated. Our children are being given, you know, outdated, worst type of education. And they say, if you want to, if you want a successful country, they said a, a, a leading country is a leading country. If you want to build a successful country, educate your citizens. So, we have a society whereby we have graduates who are much inclined and much interested in becoming praise singers for politicians and becoming vuvuzelas, image launderers, uh, PR, uh, you know, uh, experts for horrible, horrible criminals who are parading themselves, horrible, horrible opportunists who are parading themselves on the stolen mandate, mandate stolen, stolen, but forcefully taken, that people were forced to accept. Really? Can you say deep people were elected? Can you actually say that Son Olu was elected by the people? Je no, really now. Can you tell me that uh, the one in Oshun State, Tinumbu's cousin, Boyega, what? Oyetola? Can you tell me that Oshun people actually elected him? Are you actually going to deny what happened then? Are you saying that these guys were really elected? Come on. If they were really elected, do you know that, number one, they will realize that their people are poor, that it is wrong for Nigeria to take 100% taxes from Yoruba land, take it to the center, then divide the money based on population, according to them, based on population. Then Yorubas will now go to Abuja to go and collect 4 billion, 5 billion, 10 billion. This billion they will collect, eh? 
Abuja will deduct from them if they borrowed money. Abuja will deduct, deduct from them if Abuja is sponsoring anything in your state. Then Abuja will give them the rest. The governors will deduct their own. By the time they get home, the rest may not even be able to pay salaries. Then they begin to strangulate their people for more, for more. Do you get that now? So would they not have realized that asking Nigeria to renegotiate now for something that genuinely represents true federalism, eh? Is that too much for people who were elected by people to ask? Eh? Let me give you a good example. In Scotland, okay, the United Kingdom, the UK, they have four kingdoms, which you can literally put as four countries. England, which is the most popular, the biggest, right, is the one where many, many of you are actually accustomed to. But there are, other, there are three other countries that make up the United Kingdom, okay? Now, we have Wales, we have Northern Ireland, and we also have uh, Scotland. I live in Scotland. I spend Scottish money. It is called Scottish pounds. Now, before 1990, the entire UK, like Nigeria, the impression was the entire UK was a country. Everybody must accept it. Until some patriotic Scottish decided that no, because when you continue to tell us that we have to agree that we are part of the UK, yet the deal that you are giving to us makes our people poorer. We have more poor people in Scotland than the entire UK at the time. And you, I mean, Scotland, they will say, oh, a small country, a small people. They are just 5 million people. And what, what, what can they do? Oh, Wales, oh, they are just uh, 3 million people. What can they do? Oh, Northern Ireland, oh, they are just 4 million people. What can they do? Put all of them together. They are not even up to 10 million. That is the narrative they are giving to you in Nigeria to rob you. Meanwhile, Scottish people as 5 million people. They have their own oil. They have their own technology they are contributing to the UK. They have their own sea, which also empowered their fishermen for their own fish uh, industry, a very big industry in the UK. They have their own dairy farm. Oh. Scotland is like, in North, it's like northern, in, uh, northern UK. When they say we are going up north, eh, that is where Scotland is, okay? Northern UK. So, it's like uh, saying northern Nigeria, where they have the cows, they have the beef, they should have the dairy, they should have the, the, the milk, yeah? Make so much money from it, become so powerful, rely on it, sell it to the rest of the, the, rest of the UK, sell it to the rest of Europe, make so much money, be the independent, respect one another. But this idea was an idea that was too much for an average Scottish person, according to those who are also Scottish themselves. So, but because they are part of uh, uh, the UK, they have been part of the establishment, part of the system. They are using Scotland to negotiate as part of that deal in the UK for years until the young Scottish came together. They were called rebels. They were called names. They were called opportunists. They were called different things that many, many of you are calling those who are asking for Biafra, those who are asking for Odudua Republic, and those who will see us for their own countries. Do you know what happened? Which I believe is a process that is different from Nigeria. I am not putting them contest to contest here, but I am just trying to picture a scenario that people can react and say, no. Even if the general belief is, why are you troublesome? Why do you want to always break up? Why do you want to ask for more? Why do you think uh, you are being cheated? Why don't you ask your politicians? Why don't you ask your elected people? Are they not there speaking for you? You know what I'm talking about. Why are you asking for more? Because you deserve more. What is wrong if you deserve more? And you ask for more. As Yoruba people, 60 million people trapped in a country that they don't have a say. They are not allowed to say anything. When they want to talk, they will say, ask your leaders. Ask your leaders. Shut up your mouth. When Biafrans want to talk, they will say, shut up. Go and talk to your politicians. 
do you think people don't know that the politicians are part of the establishment? Do you really think people don't know that uh, politicians from this tribe represent everything that is wrong with Nigeria? Do you think people don't know? And do you really think they have to wait? They always have to wait for the politicians to change their mind and then think for the people and maybe ask for what people are asking for. That would be stupid. People are going to ask for what, the, what belongs to them. If you don't give it to them, they are going to take it. And you will not be able to stop them. It is not because there is going to be anybody that will push them. Instinctively, they are going to take it because natural instincts of human nature is to take what rightfully belongs to them. And in this regard, Yorubas will do it. In Scotland, what happened? Young Scottish people put themselves together. First, eh, they started their own political movement. They told every Scottish person why Scotland first deserve independence. They did not ask them to say, oh, we can do better than these people. No, 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 no. no. Oh, we can do better than the politicians. Vote for us. No. They said, if you give us power, eh, we will fight for independence. Consider this movement as what? Eh, as independence movement Yorubas are on the road to that we are educated people we are enlightened people you know what i'm talking about the best of us are mostly outside the yoruba land look at the exploits we have uh, made look at our people from I mean, who are now in america yorubas in canada yorubas in europe yorubas in asia look at it look at all manner of exploits that they are now recording they could do it in Yoruba land. And we have more. 60 million people cannot have their own country when they cannot have a say because their compromised politicians are speaking for them. No, come on. That will never always be right. Okay? It may take time. It may take time for everyone to agree. But they will eventually agree. Ten years after the Scottish uh, uh, Patriots came together, ten years after that, eh? well, they started a party. They called it Scottish National Party. Scottish National Party, something that brought respect to Scottish people. They have their own currencies. When you talk about British pounds, when you talk about British, British pounds, there's no British pounds. Do you know that? There's nothing like British pounds. You have an uh, English pound, you have Scottish pound, you have a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not uh, Irish uh, pounds. You have Welsh pounds. Everybody print their own money. You know why? It is part of the agreement. Do you want us to be part of the, the great United Kingdom? Then we will be respected as who we are, not as British. Do you know that an average Scottish person is more proud being a Scottish than being British? Do you know that? That doesn't rule out that uh, there are many, many Scottish who pretty much, because they have intermarried, they have jobs, companies who are like uh, British companies in England paying their pension. There are many interconnectivities that link them up to, 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 to uh, Britain, United Kingdom. So going on Scottish, uh, you know, becoming Scottish or having their own country is a big decision for them. But guess what? Everybody have the right to say what they want now. Everybody have the right to say, I want to be Scottish. I want to be British. Is that too much for an average people to ask in a sane country where people claim to be educated, where people claim to be enlightened, in a country where you know that you have many, many countries trapped together Scotland is 5.5 million. Wales, probably 3 million. Or less. Not Ireland. I mean, not Ireland. Maybe 2, 3 million as well, or less. Put all of them together. Probably 10 million. They are not even up to the population of Lagos State alone. All of them. But in a mutual agreement of coming together as a country, as a kingdom, they have to respect everybody as who they are. Which is great. Which is what people are asking for. So if you go there, Yoruba asks for restructuring. 
they said it's not going to happen. Right? Yoru, I mean, Biafrans, uh, Niger Deltans, they asked for resource control. They said it's not going to happen. Yoruba has asked for a uh, constitutional uh, change. They said it's not going to happen. But you still have to be part of that country, whether you like it or not. For how long do you think that will last? For how long do you think you can hold people of uh, over 210 million people together? Northern Nigeria can be the Scotland of Nigeria, of Africa. It can be the Dubai of Africa. They can be the greatest thing that happened to Africa. But why are the elites blinding them? Why are the elites making sure that uh, people continue to keep the status quo? The status quo that actually kills them. Then Yoruba says, well, you know what? We're not going to just sit back. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So they have declared that June 12, 2021, eh, they are going to conduct a referendum in Yoruba land. By the virtue of uh, the United Nations, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Resolution. People can decide whether they want to be part of a country or not. If they conduct a referendum that the generality of the people says, and uh, yeah, the generality of the people says they want to leave, Yorubas are going to conduct this uh, referendum and we are going to push it. Are you with me? We are going to push it to make sure that, uh, because as we speak, eh, this campaign, these meetings, these uh, different organizations coming together, keying into people talking about uh, the independence of uh, Yoruba people, self determination from Nigeria. We have those who are still agreeing with Nigeria. They will have their day on the day of a referendum. We know every election in uh, Nigeria is violent. We know that uh, they will deploy all their own resources to unleash terror, mayhem, mayhem on people. We know that the days, the, the days, the weeks, and the months ahead eh, lies with so many, many dark uh, days, I would say, because they already said they are going to come for everybody asking for the Dua Republic. They've already said that, the Nigerian army. Same thing they were doing, uh, they are doing right now in Biafra land, killing innocent people, dropping bomb on people, innocent civilians, shooting and arresting and killing innocent people in Biafra land just because they are, they are interested in going and parting away with Nigeria. So first, Yorubas are going to conduct a one million man march. Let me tell you something about one million man march. As we speak, there's a great massive awareness ongoing across Yoruba land as we speak. A serious one oh, never seen before. And what Yorubas are asking for is independence from Nigeria. So what that simply means is that the political class in Yoruba land, eh, they are already in soup. They will be the first to fight back. Okay? So with this awareness ongoing, yes, I believe Yorubas, they will agree before 2020, I'm sorry, before uh, June 12, 2021. June 12, 2021 from today should be somewhere, something around, let's say, three months away. Less than three months away. That should be around 12 weeks away. So 12 weeks, the next 12 weeks is very crucial. Very, very crucial. They will throw so many mud. They will throw so many uh, attacks, so many propagandas. But let me tell you something. We will be ready to throw where, double of whatever they throw at us. The reason is that people are not taking it slightly. Even when uh, Yoruba Obas are considered as many of them will be compromised. Let me tell you something. People are taking it to their palaces. This is a caribou. The palace of uh, Akaribu of Remo land, the paramount ruler of Remo people in Ogun state. People took this banner there. Oduduwa Republic now. Very brief. I've got other videos I'm going to share with you. Yes, there are campaigns, there are rallies, and there are other things too. Because I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, what is coming especially what they are going to do to Tinumbu. By the time they are done with uh, Tinumbu, Tinumbu will be the last that will break with the, the, the disappointment that some of the people who are still clinging on to Nigeria and denying the fact that uh, Yorubas deserves 
to be heard. Yoruba leaders, Yoruba political leaders deserve to speak up is this. They believe they will give Steve Numbu presidency in 2023. Fine. We are trying to save your lives before 2023. Because 2023 is a long time. Only if you know what they have in stock for you. Okay? But there are people that are still waiting, thinking they can talk their way. They can put this old dilemma beside themselves. I mean, just put it there behind themselves and pretend that they are not there. And look forward. They said, you know, gaze your, I mean, put your, uh, sorry, fix your gaze at uh, the, the prize. Gaze on the prize. Aha, 2023. So by the time they come back with the BLLB, Boshilo, Loshebo, as then go, now so then come back. Everything, when everything ends in tears, some of them grab the Oduduwa Republic flag. Though it might sound like it's going to be too late, but it won't be. They are going to be the new disciples that are going to take uh, Yorubas out of uh, Nigeria, finally. They are waiting. The disappointment is going to come, but not in a rush, okay? Because they did it to Awolowo. They used him. They dumped him. A great man. They did it to Abiola. It was their friend. They used him. They dumped him. These people were used against, the, not just against, the, I mean, not, not just against their own beliefs, against the interests of their people. Their people paid so dearly for it in Nigeria. Now, they, uh, well, today, they are using your Tifnumbu. They have used a lot of him. They've turned him to something like this. Where is he again? I brought something up here. They turned him to something like this. Is just the uh, the Yoruba version of Buhari. Do you get that now? So they've turned him to this. So when they finally remove the shock from the grip, eh, and they push him down the hill, some of the people who are open on Nigeria, eh, they will also give up finally. And then they will want to be interested in that conversation, which is this. Kotam, Kotam. Everybody, yow, 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 come out, uh, cutlass, come out, uh, axe, come out anything where you want, come out. Everybody just cut your own share. Everybody just find your own level. Save your people. This is somebody who actually put that in a much better way. Somebody from Lagos State, right? And I want to share that with you before I proceed. And before we also uh, continue, now that many of us that have, have now joined Maya Gun's Diary uh, live, I want to say, take a minute while you watch this video, okay? Leave the chat room. Uh, let's take that thumb up to over a thousand. I mean, how can we have 1,900 people, nearly 2,000 of us, and yet we only have about 400 people who could just put in the thumb up. While you are watching this video, you can leave the chat. Go and put that thumb up. I'll be back. Enjoy this. The money, this so-called money, they are, uh, God, wait, all this, this money they are sharing come from the South. The royal, the royalties, they get, uh, the money they get from the waterways in the southern part of the country, and with the crude oil money from the Niger Delta, they are sharing it, giving them to the north. And Lagos is getting nothing. God will punish them from Buhari down to Tunubu. How the APC leaders, God will punish them one by one. This is the age of APC in Nigeria. We told them, Mama Isha Diawola will want Tunubu. Chief Ayodeba will want Tunubu. He will never listen. And he has seen what the, uh, a full name man can do to him now. He has never learned from history. Uh, the full house of full names. That is how they dethroned the old, they made Afonja, they made him a useless man in learning. Full Ani took over in learning and they killed him. Uh, a brown colony, a brown Taiwo, he was beheaded. A young man from Mokbomosho, he was beheaded in Fire Awake Aduna. See, that is how he was used and he was dumped. MK Wabiola, that is how he was used. He was killed and his wife was also killed. Nothing happened. And the same thing will happen to Atinubu. The same thing, the worst thing will happen to Atinubu. I pray to God that God will spare us alive. Beyond 2023. Tinubu will, Tinubu, oh God, oh my children, me. Good Tinubu will suffer. I know, but he will never get sympathy from anybody because he has been warned. That is my. <laughs> Uh, possibly, we might have attracted some of uh, Tifnumbu's uh, friends or some of the uh, APC Buari idiots. They are welcome. 
Okay, you're all welcome to join my Yegun today. It's been a pleasure having you. You're going to hear more. For those of you who don't have an idea why Yorubas will get to a stage that uh, we don't need to listen to any Tifnumbu, his opinion doesn't count. We won't listen to any governor. Their opinion won't count. Nobody elected them. They forced themselves in. They rigged themselves in. We know the process and the procedure of how they take power. And we know what they have subjected the people to over the years. 22 years of uh, backwardness and poverty. 22 years of uh, total injustice. 22 years of Yoruba becoming a laughing stock in, uh, in Nigeria. Not just in Nigeria. Yoruba is becoming a total laughing stock as, uh, in, in the rest of the world. As much as you are doing your best to build something. Something you can call, oh yes. Uh, as a Yoruba son or daughter. But you are doing them outside the Yoruba land. You could be doing them in Yoruba land. You'll be making Yoruba land great. We could be doing all of this in Yoruba land, educating and enlightening our people. But you may not understand the reason why we won't get the opportunity is because the system is rigged. It's so rigged enough that uh, thugs, criminals, looters, bunch of uh, you know opportunists are in charge. And the result of that, more poverty, underdevelopment. And when people say Tifnumbu, we change Nigeria. How? Let them change Lagos for goodness sake. Let them make all these Lagos Alimajiris, these Lagos uh, Abobakus. Let them make them have life. How could you watch in 22 years of democracy where Yorubas are writing the budget? Uh, executing the contracts. Politicians are becoming richer. People are becoming poorer. Environments are becoming ruined. And they are telling people to praise them. Be thankful for having them. Come on, it won't be for long. How could such people be those that will speak for us and will say our leaders have spoken? Which leader? Looters, criminals. Let me show you something. This is legal. <laughs> Eba beso wo lu o Eba beso wo lu Eba bobo of Lagos yo e wo jangara Ah APC aye ni oni da o Bala leba no da fun alaro ni jo da fun yin Ah e wo bo na seri APC Awon ayin scam scam politician Eh Ajila ni si ama ara lo baleko o ma ga o Omo ga o ewo jankara ewo mi ewo mi so wo lu o si lo nsise eh ah e se anu wa leko o la nu ma jankara o ewo bo se ri ewo 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 si amanu wa olosu meta ari nkan kan o odun kan ti pe ah o ga o apc e ni da o e ni da rara nkan na se fun won gbara na ma se fun yin Otogena Jankara. Yeah, somebody said I should uh, interpret what he meant. He's talking, he's showing you the video, calling on the local government uh, chairman, calling on the uh, governor, and said that uh, God will punish them and then, uh, you know, like cursing them, showing everyone that look at what Jankara has done to. Some of you who actually grew up in Lagos State, you know Jankara very well. Yes. 22 years of democracy. 22 years of Tifnumbu leadership that they brag about on, uh, I mean, of Lagos State, choosing the successful, uh, you know, eight years of a fashionla, eight years of Tifnumbu, four years of Ambode, and now. Eh? But you know the truth, though. You just don't want to tell yourselves. That is Lagos State, Nigeria. It's not just that, you know, I can show you, like, Hundred videos that will make you feel like, are you sure you are showing us Lagos? It's worse. And you will not believe it. 
after the budget of Nigeria, whenever Nigeria federal government write their useless bogus budget of a trillion naira, trillion, trillion, eh? It is only Lagos State in Nigeria that also write budget that crosses over you know one trillion naira. Other states they are just moving behind. Lagos State alone generate for themselves, so they generate over seven hundred billion naira. But ironically, mm -hmm. ironically, uh, it is the Alpha Beta. They have a Ministry of Finance. They have a tax office, right? So sorry, somebody is. I want to know who is this Alexandra. It seems like uh, somebody is uh, trolling our page. I want to know who is this guy. If he's a troll, you can't be posting comments every second, Alexandra. So if you are a troll. You're going to get kicked out. I'm sorry you got my attention, okay? So please, make your contribution rather than being a troll that is, you know, driven things and uh, rolling in contract. I mean, sorry, I said rolling in contract. Uh, rolling in the comments like that. Guys, let me know if Alexandra is a suspect. Do you get that now? So you cannot be dropping comments as if to say you are a robot. So uh, sorry for that intervention, but, you know, I'm going to cut it out later. But I can't keep him on. Mm, let me see. Where is he? Alexandra, I don't know the hell who you are, but please don't don't uh, throw my page. And then uh, <clears throat> don't spam my broadcast. So spamming my broadcast means somebody can just be a robot or a BOT can just be posting same message, same message, and eventually they will get the video taken down. Do you get that now? If you spot any troll, if you spot any spammer, call my attention to it. If you spot any buari idiot, any buari din or buari didiri that is causing a nuisance, please call my attention to it. I can take care of them. Trust me, I can. And uh, yeah. So for 22 years, they have a company, I mean, they have uh, people who are employed working in the Ministry of Finance, working in the, in the Inland Revenue Service, Lagos State. Inland Revenue Service, those who are collecting taxes, they go there, they get paid, they get promotion, they get salaries. But you know those who actually collect the, the tax? Company owned by Tifnungu, Alpha Beta. Now, that same Alpha Beta, some might say, but Alpha Beta may be doing it well. Mm, are you sure? Alpha Beta is being investigated by the EFCC of uh, unremitted, one, un unaccounted uh, 100 billion. That's to put it rightly, Alpha Beta, owned by Tiff Numbu, is under investigation with the EFCC for, uh, you know, defrauding, I mean, defrauding the federal government of Nigeria of 100 billion. Do you get that now? That's a lot. But they are covering him up because he's a member of uh, APC, Egbe Kegbe. But the reality is this. If you live in Lagos State, ask yourself, is that the legacy that you want to take and give to the rest of Nigeria? Some of them, oh, some of these uh, sewage dwellers, they call them Momo boys. If you have been so familiar with Lagos politics, eh, we have those we call the Lagos Abobakus, the crumb eaters, the crumb chasers, the ass leakers, eh, the Alleluia boys. Okay, so they are from Lagos. So ask them for 22 years. Do you not really think you deserve better? Eh? 22 years of them milking you as much as they can make you. They can actually get more, but maybe you can also get accountability. Now, they have a compromise on Tifnumbu. They believe that he's so corrupt. They are not corrupt, even though they have milked Nigeria. You know what I'm talking about? So even though they have milked Nigeria, so dead. Eh? Nevertheless, do you not really deserve better? That's the point. As Yoruba people, you all deserve better. The insecurity spreading is taking over everywhere. Tinumbu is playing politics with it. Some people are also saying charity should begin at home. The love of the people you want to lead should be the love that, uh, you know what I'm talking about, that should supersede all laws. I mean, all laws. So if Tifnumbu would believe that uh, he had a deal, meanwhile, they have a compromise on him. With the compromise they have on him, eh, there's going to be a tear of. God knows what, uh, when that time comes for the Lagos Aboba coups. So when they finish with him, when they finish with him, people might want to tell you that the uh, Yorubas has been betrayed. 
Do you get that now? Yorubas have been betrayed. No, Yorubas have been betrayed by the Yorubas. Okay? They don't trust him. Okay? They don't. They don't trust anything that has to do with uh, Chief Numbu. They will use him. They have used him. And as they say, charity should begin at home. If you have anything at all, I'm talking about these guys who parade themselves as uh, speakers for Yoruba people. If they have anything at all, any any modicum of uh, integrity or respect, eh? at this point, there's no point in grandstanding. There's no point in seeing them explaining Nigeria to an average Yoruba man. An average Yoruba man and woman knows uh, wh what Nigeria is. Do you understand that now? An average Biafran woman or woman, or I mean, so a woman or man, right? Believe and they know what Nigeria is. We should never be found, or any of them should never be found defending Nigeria. They should be standing up on the side of the people, or else the uprising that is going to consume those who have been working against Yoruba people for so long, that uprising is gaining, the storm is gaining momentum. It will consume them. And I don't think, uh, they will be able to give uh, your the I mean your Jagawiri because they call him a uh, Jagaban, eh? the Jagaban of Borno, Jagaban of Borno. So maybe the, the people of Borno who made him Jagaban, eh? Maybe they will make him uh, their own Oba in uh, Borno. Like we have a uh, Oba of uh, Yoruba land in Borno. Some of you may not know that. So I picked that up uh, somewhere today, and I said I'm going to share it with you. So maybe when uh, Tifnumbu continue to speak on behalf of One Nigeria, One Nigeria, continue to mortgage uh, the safety and the, uh, the, the lives of uh, uh, I mean, his own people, and the people are no longer listening to him, and this is becoming so obvious, even to his own friends up north, that uh, he doesn't control everyone in Yoruba land. Even his own army, his own are jealous across Yoruba land. They know that they don't control all the people. So when the uprising will start, when the resistance will start, when Yoruba people will identify their enemies, eh? these guys will have to leave Yoruba land. Because defending Nigeria at this point, it will be considered as a treason and a, 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 you know, an enmity against the Yoruba race, Yoruba people. 60 million people say Nigeria is not working for them. Who the hell are you? Because you rigged an election? Because you are, you are parading yourself as a governor? Because you think you represent or speak for people who rigged for you? Therefore, you can tell them that they are wrong. Come on. When the resistance happens, they will have to run away. Trust me. Like, they, I mean, you know, even though we are asking all our people to begin to think home, if they say they don't want you, we are doing this peacefully and legitimately. Rightly so. We are not calling for violence. We are asking that let us decide if we want to be part of Nigeria or not. If you are for Tifnumbu, you have the billions. You have all the money. Mobilize on the day of referendum. Don't send them Siulu around. Don't send all your uh, thugs. Don't send your own uh, Shekau. Don't bring in your Nigerian army. Don't try all manner of uh, fuckery that will eventually escalate because you may not know what that will lead to. Because when you bring all of them, Yorubas will push back. Yorubas will fight back. And when this happens, you, will, you might have to consider eh? Either be on the side of the Yoruba or be on the side of Nigeria. Don't always let emotion run riots on your mind, okay? Nigeria is not working. People are asking that something should be done. Some people said they are powerful and nothing will be done. That you can go and do your worst. If you try anything stupid, we will crush you. That is not the way to negotiate. That is not the way to have a conversation. That is not the way to build a country. You can't rule 200 million people. Like you are ruling people in an open concentration camp for a long time. One day, they will overrun the camp. They will break the camp. They will break free. So maybe they can then make, because we can have these uh, people back uh, uh, in Yoruba land. Okay? And then uh, Tifnumbu can go back to Borono and become the Jagaban of Borono. I mean, you know, maybe, I don't know what that would mean. Jagaban, Shah. Eh? 
like this. My Yoruba, Hassan Alao Yusuf, also known as Kabiesi to Borno communities, opened his doors to all well-wishers and advocates to witness the installation ceremony of new chiefs to his traditional council. What happened was unexpected but greatly appreciated as the deputy governor of Borno, Umar Usman Kadafur, was accompanied by not less than 10 commissioners of the present administration in the state, special advisors and assistants to the governor, traditional title holders, members of Yoruba community from far and near. Mai Hassan Allah Yusuf could not hide his joy as APC chairman Ali Bukhar Dalori was also present to witness the occasion with the KBAC kickstarting the event by thanking God and the royal father, Sheikh of Borno Abu Bakr ibn Umar Garbay al-Amin al-Kanemi for making the epoch-making ceremony successful. I pray for good health, long life, and a wisdom for them to take at who uh carry on with the assignment given to them by the Yoruba traditional council Borno. They should be good ambassador of the KBAC and uh try every possible best to unite all the Yorubas. Not only the Yorubas including our host communities and other communities that are residing in Borno. I want to use this uh, opportunity to extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to His Excellency Alaji Umar Usman Kadafur. At the same time, I want to extend my sincere greetings and uh, thanks to all commissioners that came. Most importantly, our party chairman. Ali Bukat Dalori, my colleagues, special advisors, they are numerous to mention. They are just too many. So uh, they should please accept my sincere thanks and appreciate. <laughs> I know many of you know the trick, okay? All these kind of tricks won't work anymore. We want to have a conversation. I mean, this whole thing, right, is a trick. That's not how to unite people. You don't unite people by pretending that they love themselves. When every spark, boom, they will start killing themselves because they don't look like them or talk like them. This is the reality. Do you get that now? We are not saying that Yorubas are not living everywhere. We are not saying Igbos are not living everywhere. What we are saying is that Nigeria is not working for anyone. And this division has now led, especially this Bokwari division, has now led to more people saying, no, we are not going to accept people that are killing us simply because we are also living elsewhere. Our people are not in the forest kidnapping people. You cannot change the narrative and then turn it into, oh, you just want to start tribal war. People love themselves. When in a little way, I mean, if every little disagreement, you start killing themselves, they will start killing everyone. In the name of these tribal differences, it is time for everybody to come together to say, are we interested in living together? Why is that so difficult? But they are putting up different semantics. You think say now only Borono? Eh? Okay, you have no idea. You have your own, uh, what do you call it? We have our own Emia too in Lagos, where uh, Tifnumbu reside, the Jaga bandit, the Jaga Wiri. The Jaga idiot, the Jaga criminal of Lagos State, oh, Ashiwa Jua Wongli, Ashiwa Jua Wongli, manipulators, people who have actually stolen not just uh, the future of their own uh, generation, they is gone. They've stolen the future of the generation after them. They've stolen the generation of those who are supporting them. They have even stolen the future of the, uh, the, the future of the, their own children. So you just become, uh, and you will become, uh, what do you call it? A Lagos Abobaku, or you become Oshogu Alimajirio, or you become uh, an ombud snevo, a sophisticated Morono, uh, obedient fool, or whatever you choose to be, uh, an ombud slave. I mean, sorry, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> you know, the Hallelujah boys, they know themselves. I don't envy you guys, but when you look at it very well, eh, it is all a manner of trickery. They have same in Lagos State. This one came with a song. You might be kind of jiggling, you know, sort of, uh, you know, shaking your head when you watch this. Now, another version. If you don't know how they are trying to make it look like 
All we need is just to tell ourselves that we love ourselves. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you, one Nigeria. But whenever, whenever we become angry, we say, oh, he's an Igbo man, kill him. Oh, he's a Yoruba man, kill him. Every small thing. Oh, Yorubas must vacate the north. Igbos have seven days to... What the hell? It doesn't matter. But at least they put up a, another propaganda for us in Yoruba land, which is not going to sell. That is not the kind of unity we are looking for. Yeah? Is it? I don't know if I heard uh, Makayata or Kay Kay Kayamata or something like that. But I know, the, I know a lady called uh, Jaruma, Jaruma in Nigeria that is selling uh, Ka Ka Kayamata or something like that. What's that called again? Kamayata or Kayamata. Something that has to do with uh, buying or love. You know, that kind of... <laughs> oh, man. They say Nigerians. Happy people. Tell me you are not enjoying it, bright, oh bright. Are you telling me that you are not yet doing like this? Eh? Now propaganda video. See them talk say, make me off my But then go say, my ego don't come. So my people make you lie down. Oh, yo, yo, my ego don't come. Oh, yo, yo, my people make me shut up. Oh, yo, yo. My ego don't come. Oh, yo, yo.